Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again, and this is one of the better known American craft breweries, at least over here in Europe anyway, and I think probably further afield as well. But for this one, we're going to return to Grand Rapids in Michigan, which is of course home to Founders Brewing Company, and this is one of the beers that they brewed to celebrate their 20th anniversary. So the beer we're having a look at today is the Sumatra Mountain Brown. It comes in at 9% ABV, as the name suggests, it's an Imperial Brown Ale and it's brewed with Sumatra Coffee which is supposed to be a really quite nice earthy variety and if you've watched my channel before you will know that I do enjoy a good brown ale and I've been really getting into coffee stouts and things like this recently so I'm interested to see how the coffee goes with an Imperial Brown Ale. I think that's going to be a really interesting beer to try and as we know Founders produce some really interesting darker beer so it should be a very interesting review and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brew if you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other founders' reviews I've done before. There will be more in the near future. There's all the usual social media, Facebook, Twitter, Untapped, all of that sort of thing. Uh, if you do want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Founders Brewing Company then. So this brewery was originally founded back in 1997 as the Canal Street Brewing Company in Grand Rapids, Michigan by Mike Stevens and David Engbers and the two were home brewing enthusiasts that had actually only recently graduated from university at this point but both had quite steady jobs but they decided they wanted to quit the corporate world and follow their passion and they drew up a business plan, took out hefty loans and started up their own brewery. So apparently in the 1800s several breweries had actually operated in the Canal Street area of Grand Rapids and this area is now called Monroe Avenue but the original labels on the beers that were produced by the Canal Street Brewery were actually said founders on them and this became this was a kind of colloquial name that the brewery eventually adopted as their uh, as their official name if you like so after a wee while the Canal Street Brewing Company officially became a Founders Brewing Company but since the mid 2000s the brewery's actually grown quite substantially and initially they didn't do very well because their beers were all right, apparently quite well balanced, but they just didn't stand out in the way that the founders' beer do now. And apparently, these guys are producing around 500,000 barrels of beer per year. So to change their brewing philosophy and things like that, obviously did did them pretty well in the end. But they actually have a tap room which overlooks the brewing facilities at the brewery, and customers can get a view of them actually brewing the beers, which is pretty cool. There's a number of beers at the tap room which are of course exclusive there, and if they do well, they sometimes bring them out as part of their uh, their kind of exclusive series and their one-off brews and stuff like that and they do actually every year host the Founders Fest in the street in front of the brewery where it's closed off they've got lots of local food, lots of local music and things like that and it's apparently a very very good event so maybe I can get out to America at some point and have a look at that in the future. There's a lot of good craft beer experiences to be had over in America but as I said Founders are one of the more um, easily available breweries that we have here in Europe so this is a special beer as I said brewed for their 20th anniversary and it should be a really interesting one but that's all you need to know about Founders Brewing Company just now. As I said, the brewery website's in the description below if you want to have a little bit more of a read for yourself. But we'll get on it to the tasting of this beer itself. So it says on the back here, the Founders Sumatra Mountain Brown. This bold brown ale gets its body from a team of malts including caramel malt for sweetness, flaked barley for dense foam, a bit of chocolate malt for colour, and aromatic and Munich malts for added depth. German and pearl hops add a touch of bitterness to balance the sweetness. The addition of rich Sumatra coffee takes this perfectly balanced brown ale to a decade level. And it's a bit of an interesting thing to say that German and Pearl Hops, because Pearl Hops from what I remember are actually German so I'm guessing they've maybe used some Haller Tower or, uh, or something like that in this one. So yeah, should be quite an interesting one this. There you can see the nice artwork on this. Just bring it back into the light a little bit and let you see it. You can see the nice mountain there. The founder's top part of the label on this one of course and you can see it's a special bottle cap on this one for the 20th anniversary so I'll be keeping hold of that and this one was imported into Sweden by Wicked Wines. This of course was one of the ones that I got through the small partiers in Sweden and I think, I can't remember when they actually released it, it was during the summer but 40 IBUs at 9% ABV and like I was telling you it was really highly rated on rate beer. I think it was 99 overall and 98 within the style and on, uh, it was well into the 4 stars on Untapped and it had a 90 Five overall on uh, 
how do you say, on Beer Advocate as well. So a very highly rated beer, and I know some of my beer tubing friends, uh, Paul Ramele over at PA Brew News, he's definitely reviewed this one. I'm not sure who else has had a go of that, but if you want to see some other reviews, do make sure you check out all my beer tubing friends. So yeah, as you can see, you can really smell some of that nice smooth coffee coming off this one just as you take it out. There's a little bit of red fruity character there as well. But as you can see, and as you would expect, it's poured a really nice dark, I'd say that's a very dark chestnut colour. There is a distinctive ruby edge to this one. There's a solid finger of a frothy, kind of beigey tan head on the beer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. There are one or two little bits of sediment just kind of floating around there, but very, very small particles. But in terms of colour, I think it's fair to say this beer really is quite a dark chestnut and it's got a nice kind of quite red ruby edge to it, quite a kind of vinish red if you like, but a really nice looking beer and it, you know, it is kind of what you would expect from a brown ale. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Yeah, straight away it's the coffee that jumps out at you and you wouldn't expect anything, anything other than that when it's a coffee imperial brown ale. Stating the obvious. But yeah, now as I've told you before, I'm not a, a huge coffee drinker, I actually never drink coffee to be quite honest, but I really enjoy in the coffee stouts and things like that, and if you have a couple of, couple of these coffee stout beers, you really can appreciate the different flavours that you get from different beans, and you can really smell that earthiness coming out of this one. One of the best coffee stouts I ever had was the Sidamo Dim 2, which was from Dugis Brugge in Gothenburg in Sweden. And that was a lovely little beer. It was quite an aromatic coffee, that one, quite a floral coffee. And you can really, even though I've only done a couple of these coffee stouts and things like this, you can actually smell the difference between them. As I keep saying coffee stouts, this one, as I told you, is an imperial brown ale. But of course, if we are just talking in the context of coffee, you really, really can smell the difference. It's, I need to get into more of these coffee beer styles because it's a very interesting kind of adjunct that you can put into your beers. But definitely with this, you can really smell that nice earthiness in there. But this beer, you can detect that it's got a nice kind of bready base to it. It's got that almost brown bready character. There's some sweet chocolate in there. You can pick up a bit of a, a roasted black malt backbone as well. But really the coffee comes out and it just gives you that bit of a more kind of smooth quality to it actually, which is quite interesting. You really can, as I'm saying, you can really smell the difference with these different types of coffees. But yeah, a nice earthy note. The, the brown sugars are in there. It's almost got a kind of fudgy, caramelly sort of thing, but at the same time, it's quite toasted. Some sweet chocolate, like I was saying. There's almost a bit of a kind of oaky character to this one. There is a wee touch of vanilla in there, which is quite interesting. And it's, it maybe is just from the coffee. It maybe is just an element of the coffee smoothness, but there's that oaky, kind of woody character with a little bit of vanilla in there as well. Some of the earthy hops in there, of course, you can smell a little bit of that German noble hop quality to it. And there's a wee teeny, teeny little bit of a red fruity note, but that's very, very minimal. It's actually quite hard to detect that. But really, it's as you would expect, it's more of a malty leaning beer, this one. Paul actually told me, Paul at PA Brew News told me to drink this one about 10 degrees because apparently you just, if you don't drink it at around that temperature, you will miss out on a lot of the brown ale part of this beer. So just be aware of that when you're tasting this one for yourself. But yeah, it's a really interesting smelling beer. As I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you actually get stuck in because it is half the experience when it comes to craft beer, whiskey and sake and all of these sorts of things. This one really smells quite nice. So yeah, without further ado then, let's have a taste of this beer. So this one is the... Is the, uh, the how do you say it? <laughs> Name's gone out of my head. The Sumatra Mountain Brown. I was going to say the Brown Mountain Sumatra. But the Sumatra Mountain Brown from Founders Brewing Company in Grand Rapids up in Michigan. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull. Yeah. That's a really good beer. You know, you wouldn't expect anything less from Founders right enough. But you know, this is really interesting to me. As I said, I'm pretty sure this is my first coffee brown ale that I've had. Even, I mean, this is an imperial brown ale, but still, this is really nice. I do, you know, coffee, I guess it's something I need to get more into. I've just never ever really got into drinking caffeine or coffee and stuff like this, but this is a damn good beer. But yeah, that's really good. There's quite a lot going on in this one, as you'd expect. 
you know, it's a malt forward beer this. So in the back corners of your palate, we'll just go through the hops quickly, you can feel there's quite a dark earthiness to this one. As you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, it just smooths out a little bit. There's maybe a wee touch of herbal quality there. You can feel there's a little touch of floral note in the front corners of the palate, but that earthiness just spreads all the way forward and the malt base really starts to kind of push its way forward to where you would normally find a little bit of grassy character from the hops. You can pick up a little bit of that slightly noble grassy character on the very front curve of your tongue, on the very front tip, but really it's the earthy hops that are kind of dominating this and the coffee really is helping to bring that out. But yeah, the malt base has quite a bit of complexity to this one, as you would expect. So yeah, I don't think, there's definitely not black malt to this. You can really tell that in the taste. All the bitterness that you're getting from the malt base is the coffee. And you can always tell the difference really just with the smoothness. The coffee smoothness that you're getting out of this is absolutely lovely. So it's just interesting because it, it's just very interesting to see how the flavour progresses in this one. So when you first take it in, you can feel that sweet chocolate in there just kind of underpinning the beer. It's the chocolate, I think, that forms the kind of backbone of this beer, a bit of that chocolate malt. On top of that, you can pick up a little bit of that kind of toasted caramel. It does have a bit of sweetness to it. It's not really a treacle coming out of this one. It's more of a slightly sweet caramel. And as you progress, you've seen how long it was since I took a sip, but as you progress further into the aftertaste, that coffee really starts to come out and you get a little bit of bitterness from it. But as I was detecting in the aroma, it's quite an earthy coffee and it really builds a good bridge with the, the kind of earthy hoppy notes that are coming out of the beer. But this is, this is really, really good. I think this is a this is definitely a beer that coffee drinkers will probably be able to appreciate a little bit more than me. But I can tell you from my experience, this is a pretty damn awesome beer. Certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. This is definitely a kind of treat, a sort of, um, just a kind of taster beer really. This isn't one you're going to session by any stretch of the imagination. But it's really nice. There's definitely a little bit of a woody oaky thing. Right in the middle of your palate you can feel there's just a little bit of an almost vanilla oaky character in there. Probably not so much vanilla, really more of a kind of oaky woody note and that mixes well with the chocolate actually. It's, it kind of gives you the impression there's a little bit of a milky chocolate thing in there rather than a darker chocolate and I would I would say that, that the, the chocolate flavours you get out of this one lean a little bit more towards the uh, towards the milky side of things and the dark side of things. But there's a little bit of a bready character as well. Once your mouth adjusts to this beer a little bit more, you can detect that there's a little bit of an almost bread crust type flavour in this beer. But yeah, this is really, really pretty good. I can see exactly why it has the rating it does. That's one of the best brownie ales that I've tried for you on the channel. And of course with the brown ale you've got two different ends of the spectrum. You can get the more uh, malty leaning ones and you can also get the more hoppy leaning ones. This one by by every stretch of the imagination or by every iota of the imagination is in the malty category. The best kind of hoppy brown ale that I've had was the Karma Citra from, uh, from beer here on Bornholm in Denmark. That's one of the best hoppy ones that you're going to get. This one is one of the best ones at the other end of the spectrum I think you're going to find. This is really, really nice. I'm not sure how uh, likely it is that this beer will stay around, um, but it's it's certainly, in terms of the quality of this beer, it certainly is very, very good. It's one, probably one of my favourite ones that I've had from Founders. I mean, you've got the Dirty Bastard, the Backwoods Bastard, uh, the, the KBS and stuff like this, but for me, um, probably because I'm a fan of brown ales, I think this is probably my favourite one that I've tried. I do like the Scotch ales right enough, but as I've told you many a time, I've complained about that in videos before, the, the Scotch ales you get from Founders are just a little bit sweeter than the style should be. This is probably my favourite beer that I've come across from Founders before, but as I always say, beer is subjective, different people enjoy different things, but for me, this one really is very nice, and with the rating it has on Rate Beer, personally, I'd agree with that. I think it's very, very good. Mm. And as I said, if you're a coffee fan, you'll definitely appreciate the, the kind of coffee flavours that this one has a little bit more than me. 
but you really can get that nice earthy character that you're supposed to get from the Sumatra coffee and it mixes very very well it's got a very smooth malt base this one there is that degree of sweetness there but as you go further and further into the aftertaste the coffee just comes out a little bit more and that nice earthy smoothness just kind of takes over the middle of your palate it's really, really nicely done, this. There's a wee tiny little bit of red fruit in there as well. If you just go behind the front curve of your palate, you'll feel that little oily bubble where these kind of fruity esters can come out. And it's just there's just a little touch of that. So, yeah. I'd say with this one, it's maybe a little bit figgy, but there's it's mainly a kind of candied red fruit ester that's coming out of this one. I always say it, but it reminds me of these little heart-shaped sweets that you get in Haribo Starm. It's maybe even a little bit like the gummy bears. It's just got a little bit of that slightly candied red fruit to it. But it's 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 that's a kinda it's a it's a sort of offshoot if you like. It's not really uh, having much effect on the, the, the flavour of the beer overall. That's just a wee thing that you can detect there. This beer really is more on the malty side of things, but I love the aftertaste in this. You have that nice smooth earthy coffee just lingering there and mixing with some of these nice hoppy notes on the edge of your palate. This is really really well done and as I said I would probably go as far as saying this is my favourite beer that I've tried from Founder so far and they do seem to have a particular knack when it comes to the darker beers like the 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 Imperial Stouts, uh, the Brown Ales and stuff and of course the Scotch Ales are good like I said I just like them to be a bit more traditional than they are. The American ones are a bit more sugary, but this is another very, very good beer from Founders. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then, I would say this is probably quite, it's quite a full-bodied beer, this one. Carbonation is quite smooth. It has an oily mouthfeel, this, more than anything. Malt base is it has a good balance between the bitterness from the coffee, but it does smooth out a lot more in the aftertaste, and you've got a degree of sweetness in there as well. The hops are very smooth. There's just a little bit of bitterness from them, um, and there's just a wee touch of that fruity, juicy character as well. But overall, this is a really quite nice beer, and if you get the chance to try it, I highly recommend that you do. Like I've repeated a couple of times, this is probably my favourite beer that I've tried from Founder so far. So yeah, the the I keep forgetting which order it goes in. The Sumatra Mountain Brown from Founder's Brewing Company in Grand Rapids in Michigan, a really, really nice beer and probably my favourite I've tried from them so far. So yeah, if you get the chance to try this, have a go at it and I have to say I really need to get more into different types of coffee and things because the experiences I've had with coffee beers have been pretty damn good. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do check out my usual social media, of course. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and let me know what your favourite beers are from Founders, of course, and do give me some recommendations from the state of Michigan and hopefully I can review a few more of those for you over the near f in the near future. So yeah, the Sumatra Mountain Brown from Founders Brewing Company in Grand Rapids in Michigan. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. A really damn awesome beer. That's probably my favourite from Founders so far. Cheers.